All right, going to show you that the Word of God tells us how to identify that Scripture is inspired. And we don't need any Roman Catholic Church to tell us that God's Word is inspired. Because a common argument from Catholics is, well, how do you know that God's Word is inspired? Because you need to have the infallible Church to tell you the Bible is inspired. Well, God himself tells you in his Word how to know if his Word is inspired. We don't need any Greco-Roman heathen cult, nor does the Roman Catholic Church to tell us anything about the Bible and tell us that the Bible is inspired. I'm going to show you how, you how you can tell from the Word of God that God's Word is inspired. God tells us how to do that. Turn to Isaiah chapter 41, verse 22 to 23. Let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, that we may consider them, and know the latter end of them, or declare us things for to come. Show the things that are to come the hereafter, that we may know that ye are gods, ye, ye do good or evil, uh, yet we may be dismayed, and behold it together. How do you know that God's word is inspired? Because what he says will come to pass. And we're going to see that in these other verses here. Turn to Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Okay? Prophecies are how you know that God's word is inspired. You see the, the books of Muhammad, the Quran, the writings of, of Buddha or Confucius, they don't have any prophecies that have come to pass. You know? They're not inspired by God. Of course, Allah, you know, Islam's Allah is not Jehovah God. Islam, uh, Jehovah is not Allah. I'll put it that way. Allah is simply just Baal. He's an Arabian moon deity. But, you see, God's word is inspired because what he says, you see, he says, I declare you new things. So I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. He tells you of them and they spring forth. They come to pass. That's how you know it's inspired. Because what he says will come to pass. It will happen. Prophecies are how you know. And we're going to see that in these other verses. It's a theme that prophecies, what he says, will come to pass. That's how you can know. You don't need any pagan cult known as the Roman Catholic Church to tell you anything about the Bible being, being inspired. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 7 to 8. And who, as, and who, as I shall call... And shall declare it, and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming, and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. I have not uh, told thee that in time, and have declared it. Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Okay? Sorry to all the Trinitarians out there. God is one person made up of a body, soul, and spirit. And you actually have, ironically, in verse 6 of Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6, it says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. So you have two members of the Godhead speaking singular, I, singular. Sorry to all the Trinitarians out there, because this is actually a verse they try to use to prove the Trinity. Well, no, you have the two members of the Godhead there, the Lord, Lord the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, but they're speaking singularly, but don't have time to get into that. The Trinity is a false idol, it's a false god, gods, plural, actually. But you see, you know that it, it will come to pass. That's how you know that God is the one who's breathing life into this word. Holy men of God spake as they are moved by the Holy Ghost, like it talks about in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19 through 21. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 to 10. To whom will you liken me, and make me equal, and compare me, that ye, that we may be like the lavish gold out of the bag oh sorry wrong verse again I do apologize remember the things of old for I am God and there is none else I am God and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times he that he sorry the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure Okay? And this is a verse that Calvinists like to use. They oh, see God has you know complete sovereignty. No, it's just saying that whatever God says will come to pass. But he's declaring the end from the beginning. It will come to pass. He says, my counsel shall stand. You know, he says that uh, declaring the things that are not that are not yet done. Okay, he's declaring them, and then they come to pass. That's how you know God said it. 
Because if, if a deity comes to you and says, hey, this is going to happen and it doesn't happen, well, guess what? The deity is not God. It's a false god, like the demonic being, the demonic entity that came to Muhammad in the cave. God tells you how to know his word is inspired by simply looking to things coming to pass. He'll tell you it and it will come to pass. You don't need any, any Greco Roman heathen cult to tell you, oh, the Bible's inspired. No. Scripture is sufficient. Okay, you read about that in Second Timothy chapter three, verse fifteen to seventeen. Scripture is sufficient for faith, doctrine, and practice. You don't need anything else. I proved that in, in my video about scripture over Catholic traditions. The early Christians always went to scripture to prove doctrine, not heathen traditions or man-made traditions that came after the time of Christ or after the time of the apostles. But God himself tells you how to, how to prove that his word is inspired by simply looking at the prophecies and saying, okay, this will come to pass, it comes to pass, that's how you know God said it. So I just wanted to show you guys that. So don't believe the Roman Catholic lie that, oh, you need the church to tell you the Bible's inspired. No. God will tell you that his word is inspired, and he tells you how to show that his word is inspired. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.